All right, uh, welcome to the uh, fifth fifth video, fourth video, I don't know. So this is the second part um, in the adding uh, bullets to your video game it's kind of two-part series here that we're doing. In the first one, we created the bullet class and we kind of introduced opt-oriented programming. If you haven't seen that yet, please go see it. Um, in this one, we're gonna go over managing all your different bullets within um, an array list. And what I'm gonna start off with, and the reason I'm in this view instead of the computer view is, um, uh, I'm going to start off with explaining what an array list is, and I'm going to do hopefully a quick explanation of that, um, but I'm going to use pen and paper for that, so that's why we're here. Okay, so um, an array list is a type of data structure, right? And all, all the data structures within programming is a way to store objects. Um, and the way this one works is it's, it's literally a list. So the way I like to think of it is like a table. So you have this table here. Sorry, my handwriting is really bad. And within the table, you have certain indexes. So let's call this one zero, let's call this one one, let's call this one two, let's call this one dot 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 as if they're a bunch. No, actually, I can write this better. We'll call this three, then we'll do our dot 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 here. And then I'll do another one little here for n. So you have a size n array list here. We'll call this array list, right? So each of these boxes over here are now associated with a number here. So um, any sort of data structure, all it's doing is organizing objects, as I said. It's a way to keep tabs on objects, as opposed to making an individual variable for every single object, you now have them all sorted in some sort of form. An array list is very useful because you don't have to dictate the size um, beforehand. It's literally a list, so you just keep on adding to it. So you start out with, you know, no bullets, then you know your array list is empty, but you add one, then at the zero indicator we have bullets here, right? And that bullet, you'll remember, stores things such as uh, the position, right, which is a vector two, and the velocity. So now, as well as an update method. So within this bullet, I've accessed all this, um, and then let's say I also have a bullet here, and then maybe the rest of these, you know, I haven't made yet, um, so this is all empty. And it only goes from, I have position zero and one. So then within um, ArrayList, I have access to certain things. So if I want to um, get one of the things, I can say, so let's say I call this ArrayList Bullet Manager. So I said Bullet Manager is equal to new ArrayList. I'll go over the syntax for that later, but some of the things I could do is I can say dot get and then put in an index. So if I want this bullet, I would say dot get zero and it would return all of this information to me in the form of that bullet class, right? But if I said dot get one, it would return this specific bullet to me, which will have a different position and potentially different velocity. And then when I update, we'll be updating different things. Um, but then I can also do something like bullet manager dot add, and then I can create a new bullet in here, you know, and whatever my construction is, my constructor in there, which is two vector twos, you'll remember, I would add in there. And then at that point, number two would be filled up with what's in there. And now I have another bullet in here with new information. And finally, the thing you need to know is that bullet manager dot size, just like that, returns an integer value of the number of objects in here. So if I have zero, one, and two filled up, then it would return a three. If I just had zero filled up, it would return a one. If I had nothing in there yet, it would return a zero. So uh, now I'm going to return to the computer view. Okay, um, so now we're back in the computer view and hopefully you have a basic understanding of an array list. So um, now I'm going to make an array list called bullet manager to manage our bullets. So uh, the way I do that is I say array list and then in um, these sort of carrot things I put in bullet. And the reason for that is that an array list can manage many different type of objects, right? So um, within this I could put, um, you know, int, I could put float, I could put vector two. Um, it can manage any sort of different type of objects within that structure of that table with every object being associated with an index, right? It, it can um, contain any number of different objects, right? Um, but in this case, I want a bullet. So I'm gonna say ArrayList bullet, and then I'm gonna call it um, bullet manager equals new ArrayList of the bullet type here. And then the constructor is empty, so I just have those two parentheses. And again, it's freaking out because I haven't imported ArrayList, so I can import it. Um, and if you want to see my, this is currently what I have imported. So I just added ArrayList there. 
Okay, so now I have this bullet manager. Um, and uh, we're gonna get rid of this bullet here because we're not gonna use it anymore. Um, so now that's gonna break, but okay. So now uh, what I need to do is react to the person hitting the up arrow key, right? So I'm gonna say if gdx dot input dot, and within here I get, um, I get is key pressed and is key just pressed, which we went over earlier. So in this case, I'm gonna get is key just pressed because I don't want to be continually firing as I hold down that button. In this case, I don't. I want them to have to keep mashing the button. So I'm gonna say if key was just pressed, so if they just hit it down, um, the up key, then um, I'm gonna create a new bullet. Bullet, um, let's call it my bullet equals new bullet. And remember within our bullet constructor here, right? I'm asking for a location, an initial location to start it, and then an initial velocity, right? So um, my initial location can just be the ship location because I wanna start it wherever the ship is, that's where the bullet should start. That's what makes logical sense, right? Um, and then my initial velocity in this case, we'll say new vector two, I'm going up, so I wanna modify the Y value. So in the next direction, it's just stay the same place. So we'll make that one zero, and then let's make it a positive. 20. So now, um, because I'm setting that velocity to 0, 20, here it'll go through here and bullet velocity.y will equal 20. It'll add 20 to bullet location.y each time, and it'll add 0 to bullet location.x each time when we call update. Okay, so that's looking good, but now we need to add that to our bullet manager, which you can see up here. So I'll say bullet manager dot add, just like I did on the paper. Um, my bullet. So now no matter how many objects are currently in the bullet manager, it's going to add a bullet to the bottom of that list. So now what I want to do is loop through all the values in that list and draw all of the bullets that happen to be in there. So I'm going to say int counter equals zero and just make a basic while loop here. So while counter is less than the size of the array list, array list dot size, uh, sorry, bullet manager, that's the name of our array list, my bad, um, dot size, um, you know, loop through. So now we'll have the current index counter will start at zero, which you'll remember is the first index value from that paper, right? Um, and then it'll it'll go through for however big size it. So if there's nothing in there, then counter zero won't be less than a, a bullet manager size of zero, so it won't go through. But if there's one object, then counter will equal zero, which is the index of the first value. That gets a little weird at first that they use zero as the first index instead of one, but that's something that's used across all programming as far as I know, um, so that's, pr that's pretty standard. So you'll get used to it. Um, so now I want to access it. So I'll use the get method, right? So I'll say bullet, um, bullet current bullet equals bullet manager dot to get counter. So whatever the counter currently is, we're gonna get the, the bullet at that index. And then we're gonna draw it just as before. So I'm gonna say dot draw um, bullet texture, um, current bullet dot uh, bullet location dot x, comma current bullet dot bullet location dot y. And that's pretty much all there is to it, except that I'm forgetting to update again. So let's make sure that we say current bullet dot update so that all the bullets within the bullet manager are updated. We'll get rid of this little code here. And this should just work, unless I screwed up. <laughs> there we go. So now I can shoot all those bullets in the up direction. And you see how little work that was for me to do, and they're all just they're all just working flawlessly. That's because of you know those object-oriented programming ideals, and that you do a little bit of extra work in the beginning. You know that you made this bullet class, this bullet object, but now you have that easy little update method. You just set the velocity once over here. You can run through them in an array list, and it's really easy to draw those bullets to the screen. Um, I'm gonna add a couple more directions, and then we're gonna deal with something else here. So. Let's add the down direction. Oh, one other thing that we want to do, um, another, uh, so here I, I'm moving down, right? So I would make this negative 20. But one thing that's also another standard practice with an object-oriented programming is that, or really all programming, is that um, if you're using the same number more than once, you want to set that to a variable. So I'm going to say um, int bullet speed 
equals 20 because our bullet speed, whether we're in x direction or the y direction, or negative or positive, is always going to be 20 right now. But later, if I'm like, uh, 20 feels a little fast, instead of having to change it in four locations and potentially missing one and creating an issue, I just change one variable at the top and it just makes things much easier again. So again, doing that little bit of extra work in the beginning, but then um, uh, saving yourself time down the road. So now we're gonna do left, so that'll be a negative x direction, bullet speed, and then y direction will be zero. And then finally we'll do right, which will be a positive um, x direction. And there we go. So now I should be able to shoot in all directions. Oh, something's going wrong. When I hit the left key, I'm shooting two bullets. And that's because I forgot to change this to right. So there we go. So let me show you this really quick. Um, let's see here. So you can now see, uh, let's get in the middle. You can now see me shooting in all directions, which is really good. Um, but one thing that's an issue is that you'll notice, or maybe you won't notice, but these bullets are continuing to be drawn in the universe right now that they're off the screen still somewhere um, the game is calculating their current location and continuing to draw them even though the user can't see them which is a big waste of um of like the game memory as well as just it's, it's going to lower performance because it's continuing to draw things that it, the user can't see so there's no reason for a bullet to continue to be on the screen to continue to be drawn or even to exist within that bullet manager if it's gone off the screen right so um that's something that we can add fairly easily. Um, what we're gonna do is, my face is in the way. Um, every time uh, we go through to update it, um, we're going to say, we're gonna make a check. So we're gonna say, if it's within bounds, great, draw it. If it's not in bounds, then uh, remove it from the uh, list. So I'm gonna say, if current bullet dot bullet location dot x is greater than zero and so I use two and symbols um, in order to say that this and this other thing need to be true in order for this statement to go through which we did the same thing up here for this if statement making sure that the ship location was in bounds when you were uh, moving over this is very similar to that so if it's greater than zero and um, if it's less than the screen width and current bullet dot bullet location dot y is greater than zero as well. And finally, current bullet dot bullet location dot y is less than the screen height. So let's try that. And we'll put this all in one big if statement and then I'll say else if it's not there we need to remove that bullet from the manager right so that it's not continuing to draw that bullet that's no longer there so I'm gonna say I mean yeah so that it's no longer drawing that bullet that's not on the screen anymore we're gonna actually remove it from the manager um, so that it, we don't have to keep checking for it, right? Because um, now it just won't be there. So it'll, most of the bullets should pass, except for the ones that have just left the screen. Those ones will be removed and we'll never see them again. So we'll say remove at counter. There we go. Um, and let's see how that goes. Um, so right now you'll notice it's it's stuttering a little bit. And um, it, it's actually because of a bug that I have that I hadn't thought through between doing this video. It just, it feels slightly off. You'll see that it's kind of catching. Each time one leaves the screen, the bullet behind it catches a little bit and jerks. It's, it's subtle, I don't know if people will see it on the video, but it bothers me. And um, the reason for that is back, think back to that drawing of the table. So what's happening when we remove um, a, a bullet from the list, right, is now everything is shifting up. So let's say that we just removed bullet at index two, right? Now the bullet that was at index three is now at index two. Okay, does that make sense? So everything just shifted up. But um, my counter hasn't compensated for that. So I'm now skipping that one because 
I just deleted the bullet that's at two, the thing at three just moved up to two, and now I'm no longer drawing the next one, I'm skipping on to what used to be at four, right? Because everything just shifted up, because my counter needs to subtract one if I ever remove from the list. So I'm ever going to remove from the list, I need to subtract one from counter in order to um, compensate for that shifting up of the lift and list and continue to draw that next one. So uh, what I'll do is I'll say, um, yes, else remove it. Then if um, if my if my um, current bullet manager has you know has at least one bullet in it, so it's greater than zero, its size is greater than zero, then subtract one from my counter set. It's shifting back up and compensating for that removal. And now if we run it, um, there's no more stutter, and it's 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 a lot more fun to play with. Uh, but it's now deleting all those extra bullets off the screen um, and the user can't see any difference but in the background your program's going to run a lot better and it's going to manage memory a lot better so that's really good um, so uh, yeah i hope you understood all this um, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions you can send me an email ethan at outlook.com um, and i'll see you in the next one bye guys